So thank you very much, President Tsitsi Kostas, mayors, presidents, representatives of Europe's regions and cities, and dear Vice President Tsevkovic. Uh, indeed, I come from a federal state, and when I first got involved in active politics, I was elected to the local council of my hometown. After that, I became cabinet minister in the government of Lower Saxony. I was responsible for social affairs, health care and families. And I learned a lot from local politics. You realize that it makes a big difference how politics is implemented on the ground. Local and regional politics is never abstract. It's about families, it's about workers, it's about communities, and it's about people who care about their communities. And this is a lesson I have always tried to keep in mind, first in Berlin and later on here in Brussels, in the middle of Europe. Local and regional governments have their finger on the pulse of Europe's citizens. And President, I know very well what an invaluable advantage this is. It not only helps to solve small and everyday problems, but it also helps to master, as you've said, the great challenges of our time. Le coronavirus est l'un de ces défis. Oui, il a révélé notre fragilité, mais nous avons aussi pu voir la force considérable que recèle l'Europe, une force qui venait du cœur de nos communautés. Des liens de solidarité qui ont aidé des millions de personnes à traverser la maladie et les mois du confinement les plus difficiles. Vous avez été témoin de cette solidarité tout autour de vous. Et vous y avez contribué chaque jour depuis le, tout le début de la pandémie. Les autorités locales constituaient la première ligne des défenses, comme vous l'avez dit, Monsieur le Président, lorsque la crise a frappé. Vous avez envoyé des forces de police locales et des bénévoles pour vous assurer de la situation des personnes âgées isolées dans chaque village. Vous avez été aux côtés des femmes qui étaient victimes de violences au sein de leur propre foyer. Vous avez apporté des masques et de la nourriture à ceux qui ne pouvaient s'en procurer. Vous avez mis en place des centres de tests mobiles pour que les soins de santé soient disponibles à, aux plus proches de vos citoyens. Et les Européens savent tout ce que leurs maires, leurs gouverneurs ou leurs conseillers municipaux ont fait pour eux. Cela apparaît clairement dans le baromètre que vous présentez aujourd'hui, Monsieur le Président. Et vous continuez d'être les institutions dans lesquelles les citoyens de notre Union ont le plus confiance. Votre action a permis à vos administrés de sentir qu'ils n'étaient pas seuls, même quand ils ne pouvaient pas sortir de chez eux. But I also know that sometimes you have felt alone. You have felt that you weren't receiving the support that you need to help your people. Yes, this crisis has tested our union's cohesion. And some regions, regions were hit harder or earlier. Not all countries had the same financial strength. And earlier this year, we all felt the risk that some parts of our union would recover at a slower pace, that they would stay behind, that they would start drifting apart. We saw how fragile our achievements can be. But we have acted. Europe has acted. And indeed, this summer we agreed on a revamped EU budget and a recovery plan that we call Next Generation EU. 1.8 trillion euros, worth 13% of our union's national income. And with Next Generation EU, we want to give all member states a fair chance to overcome the crisis and to modernize. And regions and cities will be at the core of next generation EU. 
part of the funding will directly address the difficult situation that you are facing now. We call it REACT EU, Recovery Assistance for Cohesion and the Territories. It will be available in the next two years to finance employment subsidies or short-time work schemes or to provide liquidity to SMEs. And this will help save thousands of businesses and millions of jobs throughout our union. The same goes for our health systems. We all know that the quality of healthcare varies widely across our union. But all European citizens have the same right to health. Next generation EU's resources will therefore target the resilience of our health systems. The European funds will enable investments in new hospitals, better equipment, and a stronger healthcare system, and not only in the big cities, but also in more remote regions. Additionally, next generation EU looks far beyond crisis response. No administration should have to choose between responding to a crisis and investing in the future. Next generation EU will mend our social fabric and repair balance sheets across Europe. And while we are doing this, we press fast forward towards a green, a digital and a resilient future. We want to use these investments not only to restart the economy. We also want to use them to improve the air we breathe in our cities or to help small and medium enterprises take up the digital solutions. And for all this, local administrations must be in the driving seat. Ich finde, in diesem Jahr haben wir gemeinsam eine sehr gute Zusammenarbeit aufgebaut, unter schwierigen Umständen, ohne Frage. Und in diesen Wochen haben wir auch eine sehr klare Botschaft an die Regierung unserer Mitgliedstaaten gesandt. Wir finden, dass Städte und Regionen von Beginn an in die Konzeption der nationalen Aufbaupläne einbezogen werden sollten. Sie können wertvolle Beiträge leisten. Die Hauptstädte sollten sich mit ihnen abstimmen. Denn wir alle wissen, die lokalen Verwaltungen sind diejenigen, die vor Ort die europäischen Projekte mit Leben füllen. Sie haben es ja gerade auch so dargestellt, Herr Präsident, das war zu greifen. Und damit tragen Sie auch eine große Verantwortung. Aber ich weiß, dass Sie das gut meistern können. Der Erfolg von Next Generation EU hängt von jeder und von jedem von Ihnen ab. Er hängt ab von Ihrer Entschlossenheit, von Ihrer Fähigkeit, Ihre Stadt und Ihre Region neu zu erfinden als einen grüneren und einen gesünderen Ort. Der Erfolg hängt ab von rund einer Million Kommunalverantwortlichen in Europa. So viel hängt davon ab. One third of the 750 billion investment from next generation EU will finance our European Green Deal objectives. New resources will be available for your green plans. The resources will come from Europe but the ideas must come from you. For instance, new resources for one million electric charging points across Europe. Or resources, as you said, President, to finance a just transition in the regions that have to take a bigger leap. It's the future of our territories that is at stake. When member states will draw their just transition plans, you should be part of the conversation. And let me give you an example. Next generation EU will only succeed if we play as a team. So in two days from now, we will launch the renovation wave. We want to make public buildings and private homes more energy efficient and more comfortable all across Europe. We all know that our buildings are responsible for 40% of our energy consumption. 
and uh, some buildings are already being renovated or retrofitted. But at the current pace, it would take more than a century to bring emissions from our buildings to zeros. So we must speed up. And the good news is, by doing so, we can create new jobs in the construction sector and way beyond. So the renovation wave will focus specifically on schools, on hospitals, on social housing, for which local governments are usually responsible. So it will be up to you to bring the renovation wave into our cities and into our regions. We need you to engage with citizens and neighborhoods, but also with other cities that share the same ambition. And I know that many of you already share this vision of a greener future. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Lisbon, where the city hall, dating back to 1880, has just been entirely renovated. And this has cut the building's electricity usage from the grid by more than half. Or take Italy's Emilia-Romagna region, that is already incentivizing the use of bikes to promote socially distance mobility. So there are so many green solutions that are just waiting to happen. And therefore, next generation EU is your opportunity to bring them to life. The same goes for digitalization. Some of our regions, from the Basque country to the Danube, are already creating new hubs for digital innovation places where all kinds can thrive, digital startups looking for new customers, or traditional industries that are discovering the potential of data and artificial intelligence. But we also know the other side of the coin. Today, 40% of people living in rural areas still don't have access to the most basic high-speed internet. But we all know that these connections are the prerequisite for home working, home learning, online shopping. And without broadband, it is not possible to build or run a business effectively today. Or to build, for example, a smart city services that will keep your neighborhood cleaner, safer and more livable. Here too, next generation EU is a unique chance to expand 5G, 6G and fiber and bring them finally to every village. And again, this will only be possible with your support. Your support to prioritize investment and coordinate public works on the ground. We want to listen to you. We want to hear from you what the best solutions are. Solutions on access to infrastructure information, or speedy permitting and single administrative contact points. We want to boost digital infrastructure, expand digital public services and give the entrepreneurs the digital skills they need to succeed. We will create a European cloud and neutral data spaces because we think companies and universities should be able to share their data safely and to access them. This is an enormous wealth in these data. But we need you to promote the real hubs, where academia meets businesses, tech meets manufacturing, where innovation is born. So much of this lies in your hands. And basically, you can be a front runner and a model for others. Europe will only be successful in the digital age if its cities and regions succeed. And what I am asking from you today is more than a list of projects and initiatives. It is a vision. And President, you started to give it to me. A vision for the future tailored for your territories. A vision what cities and territories you want to leave to your children. 
I know there are a lot of ideas out there. The next generation EU is here for them. So it's your moment, it is your opportunity, and it is our shared responsibility. Long live Europe. Thank you.